All right, so we're looking at building blocks of effective relationships. I'm not, I'm not going to go through the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John today because I've done that in the first service. I want to go because I have many things to say to you, and you're going to bear them now. Amen. All right, so in the first service, we began to look at that phrase, image and likeness of God, and we said image is representative. It shows relationship. All right. So God made man for relationship. God put man in his garden, Genesis 2, 9 and 10. God walks in the garden, Genesis 3, 8. So God made man for relationships. We also said, along the line, that um, because male and female, Genesis 2, 22, uh, are supposed to be a side of his temple. So we agreed together in the first service that uh, if there's something God is doing in the earth with man, is building his temple. We looked at John. Uh, no, Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock I will build my church. And we said the church is also in the image of God, the body of Christ. When you say body of Christ, church, you are saying one and the same. When you say body of Christ, church, image of God is one and the same. Body simply means what gives expression in unity or in togetherness. So that's exactly what the body of Christ is. So when you say image of God, body of Christ, you are using the same terminology. So we also said that in John 2, from 16 to 21, Jesus refers to the temple as his father's house. So we said the temple is his father's house, which means household. So we said temple is not a physical building, it's a people, and that people is a family. In my father's house, that's the word temple, John 14 to, there are many mansions. In other words, the building of God's temple, all right, is the building of relationships, all right, so we said, in building relationships, you are actually building God's temple. That's what you're doing. In building relationships, you are building God's temple. So we said, God didn't call any of us in isolation. Isolation is impossible if you are going to fulfill God's plan for your life. In fact, I showed you a scripture in the second service in Proverbs 18.1. A man, through desire, separates himself then it begins to intermeddle with the kind of wisdom that isolation is one of the first signs that you're self-destruct. And isolation is not scriptural. God has called you into relationships. So we also said this, and this is very critical, that God made you deficient by default. So the way you are, right, you are not born complete. I'm not saying you are sick. God has things he wants you to know, learn, have. He will put it in others so that you will be in relationship with them. So we also stress the fact that you came to this world through relationships. Someone met someone, your dad and mom. They developed a relationship. They had uh, a physical intimacy, gave birth to you. So you were born into a relationship. Could God have done it to just make us show up in the earth, yes, but he didn't. He made sure that he used men to bring us into the world. Why? He wants us to be relationship conscious. Okay, so which means that building relationships is part and parcel of following God's plan for your life. That's a whole lot in the first and second services. We said he caused Paul to preach the word, Acts 9, 6, 15, 16, Acts 26, verse 18. But he calls Paul with men. If I stress an example, an illustration in the second service, that here is Paul is in danger. And he didn't just pray. Every t- if you are, if all the time you always need to pray to solve problems, then there's a problem with you. There are many solutions that are in relationships. You don't have to pray. I'll give you an instance. It was a pastor friend. It was a, young, it was a younger friend to me in ministry. So, I kind of think he wanted to get through to me, but I was not available. I guess I was on a retreat or something. I can't remember what the issue was. So he had, uh, why I wasn't available. So eventually he got through to me. So he had been fasting for three days or so. I think it was a Friday. So he had been fasting since Tuesday. So he told me what he was fasting about. Then I started to laugh. He said, ah, daddy, this matter is serious. I laughed more. (laughs) So I said to him, I said, was this what happened? Said, How did you know? I said, it's not a word of knowledge. By experience, I'd seen what you were talking about. I said, what you are going to do now is you are going to do this and this. So he did. He came back. He said, 
Daddy. That's how he calls, he calls me. I'm not daddy, really. But that's what I'm just trying to quote him. Okay, let me just use pastor so you don't think that. So I won't see you also say daddy. Come on, you need to try that. So <laughs> he, said, he said, pastor. He said, you know, and I started laughing. He said, how did you know? I said, I'd seen this thing almost 26 years ago. If you had called me on Tuesday, you will have eaten well. <laughs> see? So there are things you will have resolved with relationships. God will put in people what he knows you need. And I gave you the biological illustration. He puts human beings in two people. Come on. Come on. You can't just go and say, I'm going to have a child. How's it going to happen? Just watch me. Child. No, you're going to have relationship. You are going to have to have sex. And you are going to have to work with someone to have a child. Right? Even those who do the IVF, they use someone that they don't know. It will depend on the ones you do. So the point is, God made it that way. You are deficient in, by default and only sufficient in association. Say, I'm deficient. You don't like that kind of confession. I'm deficient by default, only sufficient in relationships. So I say, complete, complete, complete. How complete are you? You need someone all the time. Imagine if Paul just said, Lord, save me, when they came after him. I told you in the second service. But he didn't. They had, he had men who didn't just rescue him. They knew his size. They knew the kind of basket to get. Imagine, they say, bring that basket. He can't enter, he can't enter, he can't enter. Bring that one. Ah, he has dropped inside, we can't see him. So they knew exactly what to get. So if you are the only one that knows you, there's a problem. Some guys should be able to say, this is, somebody, they want to buy you shoes. They don't even know your size. And some of you make that mistake. Yeah, you just buy me shoes I can't wear. You know, I see somebody else, you say, pastor didn't like my shoe. No, I can't wear it. You should have simply asked. So really, (laughs) but the point is, you know, learn to communicate. So they knew his size. They knew what he wanted. They knew how to get, get across it. So in that basket was at least almost half of the New Testament. Relationships are there to even rescue you out of trouble. So we said, what are the building blocks of relationships? We have mentioned, we mentioned five. We said the first one, you must learn to build. Okay, we said you have to work at it. Okay, relationships require effort. There is no miracle. You see, oh, well, it's a miracle. Say, oh, this guy is my complete spec. This damsel is my complete spec. This is my friend. is the answer to all the problems. Come on, go and sit down. You have to work at it. You have to. You want relationships. You want relationships that will take 60 years. Yeah? Friendships, okay. I know marriage is first on your head. Let me see your hand. Relationships, yeah, that will last your life. Let me see your hand. You like to see relationships that last? Now, people walk at it. You know, you drop friends per week. He didn't call me. He called me. You know, you can say, he didn't call me. You call him, cut him off. He called me too many times. He called the person off. He's calling me. <laughs> You don't know how to keep any. So you have people that hardly make relationships work. You have to put effort. We said God makes effort. God's been heartbroken many times. You should know. Amen? I said you should know. Oh, you won't lie, right? You should know. And he goes after the same man that broke his heart. He goes to say, he walks at it. You can't be lazy at relationships and walk in God's plan for your life. You have to work at it. If it's marriage. Men, I told you in the series of marriage. Some of us think it's just saying I do, I do, I do on the whatever, altar stage or wherever. The work has just started. You have not done anything. You are just about to do. They do. And that will take you a lot of effort. You work at it. And you don't throw any down. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you now, this is what I'm going to say, this is for this entire series, do this for me as your pastor. Tomorrow when the series is out, listen to it, take down 
the action points. If you can, put them on your locker or in your office and ensure you work at it. Is that very clear? Don't just say, I like that teaching. First of all, it's blessed me. Thank you for the blessing. Take the instructions. Is that clear? So I'm going to read out a few things to you that you must pay attention to. So relations are worked out. So the first thing is recognition. You must know who you are. Anyone who lacks identity cannot build another person. And when you cannot identify your friend also, you can build the person or your spouse. You need to know how to build by recognition. We said the second thing is trust. What did we call trust? We said trust, pay attention, is reliability. It means to believe in another person's ability, reliability, truth, and strength. To believe in another person's ability, reliability, truth, and strength. Trust means I believe you, that is what you said. I also believe in you. There are two different things, but they are related. I believe you, and I believe in you. And there are two cases, I don't trust anybody. You don't trust anybody because you're not trustworthy. You can't say you don't trust anyone and tell me you trust God. It's not possible. You can't tell me you trust God. You don't trust anybody. That's not possible. You have to learn to trust people. Oh, I trust everybody. That's stupid. You cannot trust everybody. That will make you overcommitted in stupidity. You must therefore know who before you trust. So we said in the second service, what is the starting point? I must allow trust to grow. Trust will have to grow. Trust can be fa fragile, go off at any time. Trust will have to grow. There will be disappointing moments in relationships. You must learn, like Hebrews 10, 35 says about us and God, not to cast away your confidence. I gave you the illustration of Jesus and his own disciples. They got to a point, they weren't trustworthy, and they also didn't trust him. But the relationship did not tear apart because of that. Jesus walked at it, he appeared to Peter, he appeared to them. So there are times like that where trust is broken, rework it again. There is no relationship without trust you know, trust issues at some point or trust problems. So we said you need to let to trust. God also trusts us. And even though, like I said in the second service, when God trusts you and I, is taking a risk. Who agrees? Okay, let me ask the question I asked. How many of you know that we are not always trustworthy? Raise your hand. Let me raise your hand. Come on. Oh, someone, come, come on, raise your hand. I'm raising mine. You're not always trustworthy. Raise your hand. Come on. I don't even know yet God trusts you. All right? So, does it mean, you know, it's not good to trust somebody? No, no. But you might also fail. And God yet trusts you. How many of you agree that God is taking a risk by trusting you? Let me see your hand. Raise it. Come on. Raise it high. God is taking a risk by trusting you. Well, you know, it's worth taking the risk. But what does he do in our relationship? He, he helps us, he corrects us, he gives us second chances. How many of you know God makes it easy for us to trust him? You believe that? Come on. Okay, good. And see, he gives us this book with so many incidences, instances, words, words, words. And we are, he still gives us pastors to teach us, teach us, teach us to build our, to build our, come on, to build our, trust for him. And as we build our trust, what are we building? Our relationship. Who's following this? Come on. So, we're going to see this. We said the second thing, second building block is communication. Communication. You cannot over communicate. Look up, people. Some of you say, well, I'm not really quiet. Hmm. I'm not very quiet. I don't really talk much. Hmm. And those who say that, when they act, oh, I prefer your words. Amen. <laughs> so, you must learn to communicate. So, we said, in communication, we had, you learn to have conversations. Let me tell you what is not a conversation. All right? 
Whether they come. That is not a conversation. Sit down again. Um, I want you to come up stage to help us illustrate something. Would you love to? He said no. See? see? She, <laughs> yeah? He said yeah. So come. So we just had what? A conversation. Sit down. Thank you. That's a conversation. So this is not communication. Pastor, I said we should communicate. <laughs> she I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. No. <laughs> that is not a conversation. <laughs> so, we said earlier, conversation must be used in communication. I don't like God. Do you know why we pray? So that we can have a a conversation. Imagine if all we have is God's word. And it just says, this is how it's going to look like. This is God's word. Let me please come. Yeah. And he says, this is God's word. This is God's word. Come up. This is the Christian life. Try and hold my Bible. Don't let it fall. Go. And God just walks away. Yeah. Right? He, he has communicated, but <laughs> it's not a conversation. So what do you do? You take what is there. Right? No, no, come on. You take what is there, then you tell, talk to me about it. Right? So what are we having? And what you have done is prayer, right? Thank you. So, just dump what you want to say. You go, oh, I'm done. I'm done. Let me talk like that. So I said, this is a, this is a, this is a, a guy said, I'm done. No. <laughs> We pray because God wants us to have conversations. So we said in communication, what you do is you convey ideas and feelings, preferably in words. Actions, because you have spoken. Gestures. And you must also, communication is absent when your, the other party does not understand what you're saying. For to have a healthy communication, you must have Understanding. Did you understand what I was saying? I don't know if you like lecturers in school who you never understood what they were saying. It should be a class like hell. Oh, God. But you like the lecturers that when they teach, I remember one of my courses in the faculty of law, I was struggling with it. Because I was really, the guy who just come, obviously frustrated from his first degree and second degree, yeah, he just comes and says, yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and he just talks. And, well, and so most of us are just saying, let's just pass through the Red Sea. It doesn't matter how we pass through and get out. So I get to the law school. So I saw the same course and I'm feeling, oh gosh, I should have to pass through this. And the man, the very first class, that became my favorite course at the law school. Communication. I'm not... Sure that the other man was less intelligent, but it's just a good communicator. Some of you, you know the word of God. You know the word of God. If you are talking the word of God to yourself like this, you can. But when it's time to tell others, they just be looking. So, mm, you are very deep. <laughs> but you are deep enough to drown them. Okay, so you must learn to communicate. But sometimes communication can be learned. It can be learned. You watch and learn. Let me say this. There is no natural personality. Personalities are formed. And they can be reformed. Is that very clear? That's my personality. Who told you? I don't know. I just need it in my spirit. You must reform such personalities. In 1 Corinthians 7, Paul says, hey, in case you want to fast and not have sex, tell your wife. In 1 Peter 3, 7, Peter says you dwell with your wife according to gnosis. Gnosis is experience. Experience involves words and actions. You must learn to talk. Learn to communicate. In friendships, learn to communicate. 
Let me give you warnings about communication. Do not assume. There are things that people assume I should know. What if I don't? But you should know. Assume. Don't make assumptions. In communication. Let me tell you what I mean. Maybe your friend, your sibling, your flock, your pastor, you may want different relationships, business. And they assume. And I told you this in the second service. I had this with a partner of mine in business. And I felt, and there was a stupid assumption I made. Someone was doing something, someone close to him was doing something. So I assumed they were doing it together. So I began to react to him over what the person had done. So years later, when we now had time to have a... Now, initially, I communicated wrongly because I made an assumption. But when we now had a... I now asked a question. What happened? He said, no. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, the relationship we had built over years was already down the Red Sea. Assumptions. Don't make assumptions. Rather than make assumptions, ask questions. Look at John 21. Jesus said something to Peter. Peter said, Master, uh, Jesus told Peter how he was going to die. Peter said, Master, yeah, well, um, that person you spoke about, uh, that will be um, around for a long time. And Jesus said, what is it with you? That's all Jesus said. Look at this. Let's look at John 21. It's in the Bible. His own disciples. Peter said in verse 20, Master, which is he that betrays thee? Then he says, Peter seeing said to the Lord, Lord, what shall this man do? 22, John 21. If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to you? If I will. Rhetorical question. Follow thou me. Let's take verse 23 together. Then this went this saying abroad. Amongst where? Now, who are we here? We are brethren. Are we not brethren? Go on. That the disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him. Jesus didn't say it. He just made assumptions. And they went around and said, Jesus said what he never said. Don't make assumptions. Some of you, the way you act, there's something in Yoruba called Arinurode Orumoroko. You seem to know what is on people's mind. I know what's on your mind. How do you know? How do you know? See, I, I, I guessed it. The way you were talking, the way you, you would just destroy relationships. Have a conversation. Imagine if they are asked, Lord, um, we think you are saying this man will not die. He'll have answered them. He just assumed. And they started a sermon on it. Have a conversation. So, we said one, don't assume. Two, don't be negative. I know you will not do it. That's not a conversation. Will you do it? I'm not, I'm not asking. You are not asking. You are being negative. Don't say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I could tell you now, you will say that I am proud. If I could tell you now, you will say I should go and pray. That is not a conversation. Always have a clear conscience when you are having a conversation. Number three, okay, this is, this, this is important. Oh, should I say this one? Don't raise your voice. Hey! You know, sometimes you feel you are, you are clearest when you shout. Who, who usually feels that way? You know, and you are in the house behaving like you are in a downfall. What put this here? Don't raise your voice. Why don't just go? I was trying to say this. Imagine if God raises his voice. <laughs> the Bible says, like the sound of many waters. You go, ah! <laughs> you won't hear anything. He raises his voice that covers the earth. Then he wants to say, Shago, I don't like it. All your eardrums will go, boom. 
He said, what happened? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Number four. Don't use anger. Don't use anger. Particularly we're in an age where people think protest is human rights. They like to protest. So anything they are talking about, they are protesting. I want my rights. The wife can do it to the husband, the husband to the wife, the boss to the employees, the employees to the employer. No, don't do that. Church, pastor to the members, members to pastors. You, you know, you don't have to do that. Learn to communicate. Learn to have conversations. God talks a lot to people. What does he say about Moses? He said, I speak to him face to face. God talks. Sometimes God and Moses are talking. And Moses says, well, I think like God says, well, this is what I want. Well, Lord, why don't I have it like this? God has such conversations. Learn to have conversations, even with your children. I engage my kids and we have these conversations. One time I told my son, I said, you know, I said, you know, there were two things I said to him. And he laughed when I said the second one. I said, there's this thing about pastor's children. I said, people always, you know, put expectations on them. They think the pastor's child, as soon, the first time he sees them, will say, <laughs> Your name is, and this is flowing in the glory. I said, ah, don't let that happen to you. He said, I know that already. I said, how? He said, you told me when I was younger. I hadn't forgotten. He said, you told me when I was younger. And we used to have conversations. I said, the second one is interesting. You might not want to be the first one. Then you want to be exactly unlike your father. He says, then he started laughing. I said, why are you laughing? He said, you think I don't want to be like you? What's making you afraid? <laughs> said, well, <laughs> that's conver. You get it? Not, I'm your father. You know, no, don't do that. I know. <laughs> or is there any of information you have not given me yet? <laughs> That's not the issue. So he said, why are you afraid? I said, no, no, really. Well, the truth is, he got some of I said, he said, he said, no, 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 relax, daddy. <laughs> so said, thank you. You know, and, you know, conversation. Do you get it? Now, by such conversations, not, I am your father. Nobody loves you like me. Whatever I tell you, you must do. Nah, calm down. Right? Let's have conversations. Don't raise your voice. Ask questions. Do you get it? You know, you know, one time we went to have a haircut. So I told him, I said, you must bring down this haircut. He said, why? And I couldn't answer. I said, because I think, I think, he said, I'm not you. I know. He said, but remember you told me at my age, I said, it wasn't this high. <laughs> I remember also when I went to the barbing salon, not, my house was different. When my, my dad takes us to the barbing salon, it's just when you go here in Maryland. You don't know where you say, don't worry. They, this particular clipper doesn't use electricity. It's like tractor. <laughs> so we don't ask. And as soon as I see the pictures, I want this one. My father doesn't allow like, you point to any picture. He just says, <laughs> Father. So we go. So we grew older. And so I started putting the air cuffs and he's looking at me. What is this? What is this? <laughs> it's what I want. So this thing came back to me. When I took my son to also to the Bami Salah, he said, that's what I want. Now, I couldn't do my dad to him. I said, who is, are you paying for it? <laughs> what a threat. He said, I remember. She said, sometimes we act out the things we criticize. How many of you know that? Yeah, very good. So you must have conversations. Don't raise your voice. Have questions. Friends, talk, 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 talk. talk. God talked with Elijah. He talked with Enoch. Of course, don't do that. Enoch escaped. Um, he talks with David. And you know, God talks to people that sin. Don't make it difficult to talk to you because they, they are wrong. Ah. You know, you know, you know, there are things that happen. There was a day like that that we threw away the key of the telephone in our house. So everybody said, who had the key? It was one of my cousins that opened it. 
the first thing he did was run away. <laughs> that he can't, he said, he cannot. So, those of us who were going to report the incidents were also afraid. We didn't do anything. <laughs> hey, wait. Uh, the telephone. So, you know, the kind of thing that somebody starts a conversation, the telephone. Yes, in the sitting room. <laughs> but, but, that we normally use. Four, the key, five, is missing. We don't know where. <laughs> you know, do you know God spoke with Cain? How about that? And Cain talked back. No, that. Oh, uh, you go. No, no, you must have conversation. David, you must learn to communicate. Eli, you know, Eli was, was a very funny father. He didn't train his kids well. Eli is that pastor that accepts anything the congregation does. But that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was when Samuel told him God's judgment, Eli said, I don't care. He didn't talk to the Lord. He just said, well, it doesn't matter. You know, that's horrible. We had someone in scripture, Ezekiah, who prayed back and God restored his life. We had people who prayed and God restored them. Eli just didn't care. He didn't even have any prayer. He didn't say anything. So you must ensure that you are working on your relationships. I said something in the second service. When relationships have their usual challenges, don't let it be about you. I feel bad. I feel bad. No, no, no. What about the other person? Now, let me quickly run through this. I, I skipped it. I don't know why I did. We said there are five building blocks. We said the first one is recognition. Know who you are and know who your friend, your partner, your spouse is. Your son, your daughter. Secondly, we said you learn to trust. The third is communication. Now, we said the fourth is honorable problem solving. Honorable problem solving. Honorable po Learn to know that every relationship will only be stronger in the ability to resolve conflict. Honorable problem solving. The fifth one is identifiable, realistic, attainable results. Identifiable, realistic, and attainable results. Now, if you speak to a business venture, two of you are coming together to have business, and you say, ah, we are going to make five million every week. Yay! We are going to buy up the shares of so and so. We are going to produce. I mean, that is number five. We often want to jump from number one to five. Oh, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. Do you know how your life is going to look like? You get it? So we often want to jump to five without realizing before you get results in relationships. Right? You must have what? Number two? Huh? No, no. You recognize already, okay? You must have what? Then? Uh-huh. Oh, let's go again. You must have what? Uh, you must have what? Then? Uh-huh. You must learn to come. Then number three? Honorable problem solver. Conflict. Before you now get to what? Uh-huh. Result. Is that very clear? So you don't jump the process. You know, sometimes you find, someone asks me, so why do marriages break down a lot these days? Is there a problem in marriage? There's not. It's just the fact that we are probably raising a generation that thinks on the phone, thinks where they're working. Because you want answers. Have you seen people on social media? They don't even want to read what you are saying. They want to ask you a question quickly. Yesterday on my Facebook, I saw something about how to make 10, 20,000 every day, right? In, in fact, somebody in this church, as soon as she saw it, went on my wall and said, this is not my pastor's post. My pastor's has been act. Because she assumed it was an investment scheme. It was not. And if you go on my wall, you see people were asking, sir, so how do I get involved? So, sir, what do I do? I mean... In what? <laughs> in what? If they are taking the patient to click, they will have seen the suggestions, hairdressing. <laughs> it was there. Very realistic things. 
They say, I mean, sir. I mean, in what? Can you see why we have uh, um, Yahoo Plus? That's why we have it because people want things quick. Can you just read it? Eh? So we say, sir, um, when um, Adam was speaking to Eve, who was the serpent? So I said, go a little lawyer Genesis. Sir, can't you just tell me? <laughs> That's it. They're in a hurry. They're in a hurry to post the picture of their spouse. Why do they want the ring to be handed over to them? In the kneeling position. It's so that they can post it. Why didn't you accept the ring kneeling down alone? You're quiet. I mean, just go to inside the room and say, God is there. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess I'm old school. So, <laughs> so usually we want number five very quick. Living ever after. You want, we're going to be together. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to buy the house we like, where we like it, how we like it, the way it is. And you're going to remain beautiful for the rest of my life. <laughs> beautiful for all situations. Is God. Learn to talk a lot. Use words that can be understood. I don't, I don't care. I don't, how can you get to your house and, and you're speaking your children and getting the dictionary? What did that just say? The incorrigibility of your of the ayatos in your <laughs> say, Dad, can you speak in English? <laughs> All right, so you go communicate with your pastor. Don't make assumptions. I know pastor doesn't like me. Maybe you are right. But don't be stupid. <laughs> Can't you just say, Pastor, I, I kind of feel, uh, I, I thought, you know, and let pastor answer. There are people that have assumed something that I didn't know me. And there's some, I, I, I don't know about others, but I don't use actions. I talk, I guess. Except your partner, your friend, your spouse is dumb and deaf. Don't use sign language. Right? Learn to talk. And except your partner, spouse, friend, flock, members, pastor, except they are inanimate object, don't use loud voice. Okay? Use words that can be understood. Communicate with your pastor. Pastor, communicate with the flock. Husband to your wife. Wife to husband. Your boyfriend. Well, you know what that is. Girlfriend. You know? Can you just talk? Just somebody just, just frown. And the Bible says a wicked man that had met his face. Mm. Even idols talk. Learn to talk. Parents, talk to your children. Don't, don't, don't just get home and, and sometimes you transfer aggression from your workplace and then you're frowning and everybody's scared. You've been in traffic. Of course, Lagos, I mean, the number one demon is traffic, really. You're in traffic. Why don't you just get home and say something like, guys, I'm tired. Man, imagine if you, rather than frown, you go home and just say, today has been hectic, man. The traffic is terrible, guys. I really, I really, really feel horrible. And they say, sorry, can we get you? Don't go. And they say, I think there was traffic. I think there was traffic. <laughs> <laughs> can you just talk? Do you get it? You know, do you know that when you were younger, or you're in the house, and they say, daddy has come. It's not good news. He has come. Then you look around. What is missing? What is what is not? <laughs> hey, that's not really fair. You should you shouldn't be like that. How long you do your kids hug? Oh, thank you. They hug you. You know, hug you. You know, there are guys in this church. <laughs> I did it years ago. If I say I love you, they look at me like this. Men. Th- th- thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the guy said, I love you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Renew your 
your mind. Love. What in love? <laughs> Communication, have conversations in partnership. Now, in communication, listen, write this down. Pursue clarity and accuracy and honest communication. Clarity, accuracy, honest, transparent communication. Do not manipulate. I told you what manipulation was. Manipulation is to try to get people to say yes when they don't mean yes. And sometimes we grew up like that as kids. Mommy says no, then you go, ah! That's manipulation. Have you seen babies do it or little children and they cry? Ah! You can't have it. Ah! And then they throw tantrums. Pew, pew. Sometimes you can grow that way. If you're not going to give me, I will make you give me. So you do stuff. You grow up like that. You do it in the home. We've seen couples do it. There was a man like that, he said. He had done something, and then the wife disagreed. The wife wanted to change his mind. And then when they got into the bedroom, and they wanted to have intimacy, they said, no, I'm tired. She said it for weeks. The man said, I'll do it. That's manipulation. Don't do that. See, parents, we say, when I take your school fees, when I take your pocket money, you will learn lesson. No, don't do that. You can now. I dare this man message. Yeah, you can, but do not make people do things out of, you know, twisting them. Don't do that. Don't manipulate. And we said manipulation is just like witchcraft. First Samuel fifteen twenty two and twenty three. Be positive in your communication. All right. Don't assume, we said that earlier, be intentional in communication. Be intentional. Learn to be intentional in the way you communicate. Be intentional. That is, if you, if you, I'm going to show you something. More. If you don't know what to say yet, don't open your mouth. And don't use sign language. I'll have told you, <laughs> You know, some, have you been in the room somewhere and the person just sign? Hmm. You want to say something? Hmm. Hmm. Come off it. That's manipulation. Talk. Well, what I'm going to say might anger you, then shut up. Do not manipulate in communication. Learn to know that trust takes time, it also takes work. You can build healthy relationships around your career, around ministry, around marriage, around friendships. Healthy. You know, one time I got myself and some friends. And one thing my friends know about me, and it is ministry friends, is I learned to talk. Right? I learned to, yeah, guys, let's have this conversation. One time, you know, we had this, myself and two friends, and all preachers. And I noticed that there was a tension. So I, I saw two or three in the room. So one person raised his voice. That was raised his voice. Interestingly, if we're going to look at what was going on, I should have raised my voice to the highest. It was about me, really. So I just kept quiet. So I said, okay, what should I do? Let me communicate properly. I learned that. If I was younger, I'd have done something more stupid. So I went ahead and said, okay, um, I know who they are, right? And I trust them. So even though something that was done betrayed the trust, but it doesn't matter. We all can be, on, we all can be below trustworthiness. So I just said, you know, now let us, so if we go from trust, if trust is shaky, we go to what? Honest? Huh? Problem? Solve it. So, trust, we communicate to achieve honest problem solving. At the end of the day, the two persons apologized. Sometimes you can, if you can just be patient, you know, don't make assumptions. He knew what he was doing. This didn't because. No, don't do that. 
Be patient so you can achieve honest problem solving. Learn, see, these devices can be ridiculous. How many of you know that you can, you can destroy relationships by charts? You know that? And the person is reading exactly what you didn't mean. So, there are times you will need to see. Is that clear? Sometimes, even talk on the phone, than chat. Sometimes you need, let's talk about it. You know, my, my dad used to do this, and I, and I really enjoyed that. So, we, I would have loved to be speaking on the phone with, of course, two reasons. Um, it was easier for me to not look at him. Secondly, he used to do the calling. So, I'll, so I'll be talking and talking, say, so he say, when we see, we'll talk about it. And I found out that most of the things I thought were issues, whenever we sat down, remember one time like that, I kept sending text messages, and he didn't respond. Because I was trying to explain something to him. I was not happy. So when I went and traveled to see him, within 10 minutes, what I stayed away from him for two weeks was just resolved by, he just said something and clarified. And I thought, well, oh gosh, these phones will not kill us. And I could have just spoken on the phone. Sometimes you say, let's see. Why? Because God made us social beings. Let's see. Let us sit down. Let's talk. Do you know sometimes you know how to say something when you are in the same room? How many of you know that? Come on, let me see your hand. Come on. Be in the same room. Don't, you are upset about what your husband did in the morning. Don't send a chat. Don't say, I thought I married a correct man. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What manner of wife? Are you Job's wife? <laughs> Don't say that. Have you seen people that they complain about someone, the moment they see each other, the conversation reduces to a few sentences. That's the truth because truth often, and not all the time, becomes more apparent when there's physical communication. Learn to sit down and learn to talk. See people. I mentioned this earlier. I'm going to read it out to you. Learn to give thanks. Learn to say thank you. See, there are little things that can be done that can make relationships very, very healthy. Let me um, read this out for you. It's going to bless you. Okay. Okay, wait one minute. Now, I said basic rules in human relationships and interaction. One, think before you talk. How about that? Think before you talk. Don't talk, then think. Don't talk, then think. So don't, don't talk first, then you say, oh, think before you talk. James 1, 19. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Solomon says it's a fool that speaks before he hears a matter. Learn to think. Many marriages, business relationships, ministerial relationships have been destroyed based on overreaction. Like you're about to say, what did we carry? What did you throw? Learn to think before you talk. Don't make hasty conclusions. He doesn't like me. She doesn't trust me. He doesn't want to walk with me. He wanted to dupe me. That is why he started the business. He never wanted to marry me. He wanted to use me. All those stupid things. Don't make conclusions. Don't generalize. Separate issues. Now, Someone may disagree with you on politics. It doesn't mean he's a bad guy. I have friends that we have different political views. And we, when we talk about it, we, we, we accuse each other and then we go. And then afterwards, we go and have lunch. And we're not like, no, we don't have to do that. Separate issues. There are people I relate with, for example, who have different Doctrinal positions. Of course, that's not held in the local assembly, but we're indifferent. But we, just, we just laugh over it. I remember just a few weeks ago, somebody said this. He said, 
And he, he, made, he just made fun. Now, if you hear that in a terrible way, you may react wrongly. He said, defender of charismatic, uh, no, no, sorry, let me say again. He said, defender of charismatic scoundrels. Now, I know the person, so I know why he said that. So I said, <laughs> I said, R.S.E. Hunter. I will just laugh and say, Chris, you're crazy. I said, I'm not. <laughs> and I will just, you know, say, defend our counsel. He's your father. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that. Learn to separate issues. Somebody may not like something you did in your office, maybe management meeting. Then this guy's your party, party, party. Then you have a decision to make in management. And then he says, we, we are not selling this product first. Therefore, he said, he wants to destroy my career. No, it's, that's just how he saw it. He said, no, I know. He wants my office. He wants my position. Cool down. Don't overgeneralize. It's a pretty issues. Do you get it? You know, don't overgeneralize. Myself and my son, we love and hate the same things. He likes mercy. I, I love, no, I'm a Christian. I like mercy, but he's not the greatest prayer for me. He says no. He, he, he makes real fun. The worst thing he did was he got his sister. And that's where I put my foot down. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. So, because she's not an Arsenal fan. So we go, no, no. And we don't go, don't do that. And he, he just laughs and says, your God, of course, yesterday was different. Uh, so you know, say, say, your God needs a club. Say, maybe you should get him a club in, he said, I think he said the Jebu or something. <laughs> I don't say, Ah, Craig, I'm your father. <laughs> no, that's just an issue that you don't agree on. Right? You just don't agree on it. We have conversations. So, 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 so friend, just don't tell us. He's, 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 he's trying to be independent minded. <laughs> no. Don't do that. Ensure that you, I said, you owe your friends a little bit of more patience before making conclusions. There are times you need not to say anything at all. So, write this down. Oftentimes, when emotions settle, we find out that we have been very forward and many times unwise and overexcited. When emotions settle, when it settles, it's oof. I shared that in the second service. I had a business partner, we worked so hard together. And I mean, <clears throat> so hard together that we were so neatly close that he could sign my checks. We were that close. Sometimes, you know, and he could answer my calls. Our answer is. So we got things mixed up. Emotions. Now, I should have known better. And I let my emotions go wild. And many times, like I said in the morning, it might take a longer time to rebuild what you had built and destroyed. The patience you will need to be rebuild, use it to keep the building up. Is that clear? Use it to keep the building up. Have you seen that people that have second marriages oftentimes have the same problems? Not all the time, but at times you just need to be patient. Many times when we're married, we're in times of our lives where we're still becoming. And you couples must learn to understand each other. You want to know everything about me. I don't even know me. That's a tough one, right? Be a little bit patient. Give it time. Allow relationships to blossom. Okay? So, in communication, don't assume. Be intentional. God is intentional. He says what he means. And he means what he says. Don't say, I don't want to say anything because if I say it now, that's how you, mm -mm -mm -mm. If you are, if it's not going to edify, if it's not going to build, don't say it. Relationships that are parasitic are dangerous. You can say anything, you don't care about that person. Sometimes when you see people come on social media to talk about family, talk about friends, talk about their flock, talk about their pastors, for whatever reasons, you know, anything can happen in relationships. It's because they've either been in, have been parasites in relationships or they're in relationships that they're not, they're not really bothered about contributing to. You don't entertain the world 
with your disagreements with your friends. Your disagreements are not for entertainment value. Don't do that. I can disagree with a friend and nobody will know. And sometimes, have you seen yourself disagree and eventually agree? Right? But let me ask you, if you had fed the world with your disagreement, oftentimes you can't agree again. Because your ego will have been involved. If we can learn to communicate to the right person. See, if, see, see what I'm saying. If blessing offends me, I don't go to Yinka. That's wrong. Jesus said you go to the brother. Communication is not talking to the wrong person. You must talk to the person involved. Communication involves saying thank you. Learn to say thank you to your children. Thank you. Learn to say thank you to your wife, to your husband. I said in the second service, let's say thank you to your employer. Don't say, what? I work for my money. When you lose your job, you appreciate it. Then you say thank you. Thank you to your doctor. Thank you to your patients. Because if if you don't fall sick, they won't come. (laughs) If they don't come, you don't have money. All right? Let's say thank you to your customers, to your church members, to your co-workers. You go for evangelism together, and you go, thank you. Learn to say thank you. I, I don't have the time. I've read an article I put out two days ago, The Depth of Gratitude. You, we, are all, we all owe people. You owe your parents. You owe your siblings. You, you owe many people. You are in this world to pay debts. God kept... Now, let me say this. There's something we call in Yoruba, we call it Siregu. Siregu means that you keep repeating that you have done something to someone. See, it's not... It's an anti-scriptural connotation. God actually does this Siregun thing. He says it so often. He told Israel every now and then, I rescued you. I delivered you. So therefore, he said that often. So, you always owe gratitude. There are two. Uh, A couple like that, a husband and wife, they were having this conversation. Of course, when they were younger, the wife was majorly responsible for their financial status. The man was struggling, the man had, the woman worked more. So as time went on, the husband now became a bit more comfortable financially, so he was doing well, got cars, built a house. So they were having this conversation, and the husband said to the wife, how much did you do, Seth? If you tell me how much you have spent in this family, I'll write you one check. Arrogantly. And I was present there when that happened. I'll write you one check. And I will clear. I said, no, no, don't talk like that. You should have written that check then. That's when it had value. If you didn't, you couldn't afford a cup of water, it was given to you. Hey, even if you're a billionaire, you were poor that day. You needed that water. You do not measure kindness. Kindness is immeasurable. You needed it, you were given There are people you owe that are poor. And you're not giving them money alone. There are people you owe who are not half as educated as you are. My dad had this sibling who practically, I used to ask him, why do you so much defer to this woman? He told me. He said, she stayed behind so that I could go to school. He said, for the rest of my life, I'm grateful. I used to wonder why. I mean, he said, no. He said, there's no wisdom I have that is not for our wisdom. Because they lost their mom when they were young and she, I mean, when they were younger, oh no, their dad, sorry, when they were younger and, you know, they couldn't afford the fees, etc., etc. So she had to do all the work. She had to sell stuff to have him go to school. He said, I'll never, ever forget it. So when he got married, he brought her kids into the house. My mom didn't like it, but it didn't make any sense to him. There are people like that in your life. You owe them everything you are. Paul told Philemon, he said, well, Onesimus has offended you. Go ahead and forgive him, your brother. Said, However, you can put it to my account. If your pastor says put it to my account, just forget it. <laughs> so he now says, well, whatever. Don't forget. You owe me your life. You owe me your prayer life. Come on. You owe me your knowledge. of the, You owe me your salvation. You owe me why you serve God today. 
You owe, you remember you got healed in healing school? I did. You remember? You remember I gave you, yeah, you owe me your life. And he so trusted Philemon, he gave Onesimus the letter to deliver. Philemon had the option of calling the police, getting the guy locked up or killing him, or acting according to what Paul told him. So listen carefully. You must learn to say thank you. Thank you is never enough. Is that very clear? Thank you is never enough. You owe gratitude all the time. Paul told the church in Rome, you guys are excited about Revelation knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Do you know why you have the word? We don't know. It is Jerusalem. The Jews. So he said, you must, you owe them your material support. You must keep contributing. Why were the church in Asia contributing to the church in Jerusalem? Paul told them. He said, you owe them. They have sown to you spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 9, 11 and 12. You must give back your material things. Romans, Romans 15, verse 26 and 27. You must give back. Learn to say thank you as many times as possible to your staff, to security. Thank you very much. Oh, but I hired him to do it. It doesn't matter. What if he doesn't? What if he does it wrong? Particularly, I say thank you to those who cook for you. You know what I mean. So you have to. Oh, come on. You should, so come on. You should, you should get that somehow. Learn to learn to say thank you. So we move from a relationship from identification, recognition, we learn to trust each other. And when trust begins to have issues, what do we do? We communicate. And why are we communicating? Number four, problem solving honest solutions. Right? We must move from dumping people to solving problems. Of course, in solving so problems and giving solutions, we must be transparent. How many of you know that God always solves problems? Who knows that? From Genesis 1, 2, 3, the Bible is a book of redemption. God is solving problems. And all, are, are, you, are you aware that sin is a little problem? You, are, you, are you aware of that? What is sin? God said, do it. You did not do it. Is that not what it is? So is it a relationship problem? Huh? Come on. Does God seek to always solve it? He forgives you. He restores you. God is always solving relationship problems. So, I said this here. God, watch this now. You deal with the trust issues by communicating and God wants to solve human problems. God's problem is human beings. Are you aware of that? You ask him, what's your problem? You. God, I mean, what's your greatest problem in the world? You. How is God going to solve it? He uses men. How about that? He used Mary. He spoke to Zachariah. God is very clear in communicating. If he wants to solve a problem, he tells you exactly what he's going to solve. Learn to communicate. Now, don't talk to the enemy. Don't talk to people's opponents. I'm smart enough to never do that. Now, let me give you, I mentioned this in the service on, was on Wednesday. And I'm going to repeat it again. I had this group of friends. Uh, interestingly, they're late now. And we had this disagreement amongst ourselves. So one of us, we felt, didn't act right. So we were trying to organize a program some 27 years, 27 years ago, 26 years ago. And so the program was going to be organized, and uh, my friends were meant to speak. Now, I was part of the organizers, a major, a major one, but not the major one. So somewhere along the line, the organizers felt my friends shouldn't speak at that convention. convention. Okay, because of something they heard, they didn't hear, they didn't believe, they believed, you know, all sorts of conjectures. So anyway, I had to speak to someone who was meant to be a respected Nigerian preacher. Some of, everybody here knows the person. So we went to his office and here he was. So he asked us to speak to one of his associates. And the guy said to me very clearly, he said, well, we love you, we love your ministry, we want you to be part of this team because they were sponsors of the ministry I was belonging to them. And they said, yo, yo, we want you to, you know, we know, we heard you can teach, we heard you can train, and all that, but we we'll love you to do two things so that we can continue with you. Well, your friends, uh, we heard so, 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 and so about them, 
uh, it's not totally proven, or your friend, sorry. And he said, what do you do? And they said to me, uh, you do two things. One, publicly renounce your relationship. Secondly, denounce your friend. I said, I'm doing neither of it. Interestingly, I had my friend had fallen out at that time. But that doesn't change anything. So I'm doing neither of this. So I don't need a door that requires this. I will wait till I don't have to do this to gain advantage. So I said, ah! Romeo, what's wrong with you? I mean, this is no big deal. I said, no, I won't do it. I don't have such a conscience. So I walked away. I'm glad I did. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I did. Because you need to know how to resolve conflicts. Don't talk to an opponent. Don't give anybody the leverage. Don't talk to the neighbors about your husband or your wife. Don't be stupid. Why are you discussing the issue at your office? What's the point? You are talking to destroyers and not builders. So deal with the trust issue. Communicate effectively. Don't talk to the enemy. God used human beings to solve human beings' problems. You know, <laughs> You see, Peter, Jesus is talking to Peter, he's communicating. He said, Peter said, Lord, is it you? He says, I, Matthew 14, he said, okay, bid me to come. He's the one that asked, though. Bid me to come, Lord, I'll do it. I will follow you. I will follow you. He steps on the water, then he starts to look at the wind. And he said, Lord, I drown. She does not say, I can't trust you. You have my word, you can act on my word. Oh, bye-bye. He goes to rescue him. In Matthew 16, Peter comes again. Oh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed are thou, Simon by Jonah. Say, yo, thank you, Pastor. Ooh, shall die. He just said, wow. I'm going to Jerusalem to Christmas. I said, get me out. Don't, it will never happen. It's not your portion in Jesus' name. He drops the ball. Get behind me, Satan. The guy's just dropping the ball. Again he comes, Matthew 26. Lord, I'm going to die with you. Nobody, see, nobody can come between us. I'm for you. I'm eternally yours. He said, I pray for you, guy. He said, don't bother. Pray for the others. I'm not, I'm not a prayer point for commitment. I am committed. <laughs> well, you know what? He dropped the ball. Jesus comes to him and still believes in him. Can you believe in your friends? Can you believe in your spouse? Can you believe in your business partners? Your business partner can make a wrong business decision and lose a lot of money. You don't say, why did I even get in this business? I was sensing it. I was sensing it. When you were buying the car, did you sense it? I was sensing it that this thing, this guy, I was sensing it. Only ran Ensure that you communicate properly. Have problem solved. Sit down, of course, like Paul did with uh, Philemon. And he said, look, I know this is a problem. Be honest about transparent, but seek to solve the problem. Don't have a conversation with your friend, associate, colleague, church members, pastors, just to show the problem. Now, this, this is me, your pastor. This is how I train all your pastors. And they know what I'm about to say. Right? Now, they, they can answer. Every time they come to me and they say, Pastor, so and so has gone wrong. What do I say? I didn't hear you. What is the solution? I don't need a relationship to walk in ministry that cannot think of the solution. We want to solve the problem. Well, my husband is not my husband. Okay, have you ever tried to? What is the solution? I don't know, Pastor. I don't know. I'm tired. You are tired and you are shouting. With this strength, you are not tired. I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired. The man says, "I'm giving up." This woman, she's a winch. <laughs> Come off it. Come on. Let us solve. A problem. Let's solve it. Let's have a communication. Let's talk about it. We're not talking about it so that you tell me your mind. I will, I will tell you my mind. Don't just tell me your mind. 
right? I shall tell him or her your mind, mind them too. Mind them. Mind the people you are telling your mind. Number five. What's number five? You learning something? What's number five? Identifiable. Realistic. Uh Uh-huh. Expectations and results. Identifiable. Okay, this is something in my notes. You want to write it? Don't live in la-la land. In la-la land, you are just dreaming. Uh, My night in shiny armor. The guy has no armor. You are the goddess of my soul. And you have the bow. No, well, be realistic. She sometimes will drop the ball. He will drop the ball. Don't set your expectations too high. Right? Have you tried to jump? I'm a, I'm a young primary school boy. I'm, I attended Union like Staff School. And we were having this eye jump, preparing for the inter-house sports. I was in Jaja House. So we were trying to jump. So I jumped the first one, and he, what I said, he, 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 he. So I said, raise it high. <laughs> raise it high. <laughs> you know, raise it high. We just, we, I think we just had the Olympics. Raise it high. Raise it high. So yeah. So I said, I was not going to raise that. I was going to go by my back. <laughs> so I went, oh. I didn't get to the pool. I didn't get to the mattress. I jumped without the pole. And I went, <laughs> on my left hand. I went, oh. And my friend, Chuku Weke, said, what is happening? I said, I can't feel it, ma'am. I can't feel it. It's not there. He said, he's there. He's there. So he started to pull. Let me put him up. <laughs> so you raise the bar too high, Right? Have manageable expectation. I know sometimes you talk to a woman, you want to marry, you say, don't worry, I'll take care of you. <laughs> you will have a day where you will need, so say, I'm going to be with you for the rest of your life, and it goes to work on a Monday morning. <laughs> See what that is? So that statement qualified. Put it in context. Is that clear? <laughs> don't set it too high. For congregation, for your pastor, don't set it too high. Now, write this down. The distance between expectation and reality is called disappointment. Right? Have identifiable, attainable expectation. It makes relationships healthy. It makes relationships healthy. Don't expect too much. Don't have this high, it's most, this most, no, no, no. Be realistic. Be realistic. Then I put this there. I said, relationship busters, they kill relationships. Fear. Don't raise anyone. Don't raise relationships based on fear. (laughs) I don't know. We'll just be poor. The way you are going, relax. Fear. Fear. Your husband, your wife wants to go into a business. You say, hmm, if this money should go now, I can't go and beg family for school fees of the children. Calm down. <laughs> now, of course, you can plot your risk properly, but don't create fear. How do we know fear also affects our relationship with God? Are you aware? What about anxiety? <laughs> anxiety. Sometimes your kid comes back to comes back home and doesn't do well in the can say, ha, ah, ah, ha, you're thinking, hey, hey, failure. I hope you will not go. Relax. Just feel the cost. Relax. The business just went bad. You can do another one. Anxiety. Suspicion. Hmm? Where is she coming from? Where is he coming from? Who is he talking to? God. Suspicion. Job was acting in suspicion. In Job 42, he said, I've heard of you by rumors. And look at all he said because of suspicion. Seek the Lord. 
Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. Seek the Lord out. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. Learn to seek the Lord out. Like we said earlier, ask questions. Relationship busters. Fear, anxiety, suspicion. Relationship boosters. Peace. I know peace helps our relationship with the Lord. You know that? What about joy? Come on. Joy. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. What about applying that in your relationships? One prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ. Learn to function in peace. Joy. Hope. What about hope? What about hope? Expectations. Joy. Who loves to be around joyful people? Amen? Come on, let me see your hand. Peaceful people? What about someone's always arguing? I don't like, I don't like, I don't like. Oh. You know. Who put this here? Why is it there? Huh? Can't you talk without those kind of questions? Peace. It boosts relationships. Loyalty. Even when he doesn't have this anymore, he will stay with me. Loyalty. Let's have dependable relationships, okay? Be dependable. Let's be able to trust you even when things go south. You know, there was a relationship I tried to intervene. Husband and wife. So I was trying to fix the issue. So the husband... Now I had a problem with the law. And then the wife was all over the issues. Because they were, they were trying to have a problem. I mean, they were trying to resolve their marital issues. So she, she now went around and told people something that wasn't known. So I told her something basic. I said, you don't expect someone that you did that to, to trust you. Everybody said, No. Have some loyalty such that even when you no longer get advantage, you keep your commitment. Loyalty helps relationships. Honor helps relationships. Do not disrespect your wife if she's a person of honor. Don't say, I'm a husband. So some of us can be very stupid. Your cousin is a pastor. Everybody says, Reverend, Reverend. So that you show you your cousin, you say, Shall I go? Bolo. Relax. That's, they're not helping that relationship. Don't. Don't let people disrespect your friends through you. Be the reasons why your friends are honored. Honor. Accountability. Learn to talk. Give account of things that you are doing. Secrets don't help friends. Learn to give accounts. What else? Now, this is very vital. Put this on your A list. Learn to be merciful. How many of you know the reason why we love God is because he's merciful? Let me see your hand. Come on. Be merciful. Don't be judgmental. We are all imperfect beings. Who agrees with me? We are all in perfect beings. Don't be unrealistic. Those who judge the most are hypocrites. The full of mercy and compassion do not be unrealistic. See, no relationship grows in the atmosphere of condemnation. Can there be correction? Yes. Instruction? Yes. Can you even have instances where you are firm with your friends? Yes. But in an atmosphere of love. Right? Not reminding your friends of what they have done wrong. That's not a good way. If your husband had an heir or your wife, repeating it every time doesn't help them. Many times you make them do it again. Learn to culture, love, mercy, right? Freedom of thoughts, righteousness in your home, in your relationships. So it's very critical that we know how to build these relationships. You can pull down your relationships with the busters of fear, anxiety, suspicion, 
being judgmental. You can also keep it strong. Peace, joy, loyalty, dependability, accountability, mercy. They keep relationships going on. There are no perfect relationships. Let me say this again. No two people are the same with others. Realize that. And that's precisely about marriage. You could marry A and it goes differently. And A marries someone else, it goes differently. So making unnecessary comparisons ruins relationships. So be less judgmental, be merciful. Watch envy. Told in the first service, learn to celebrate your friends. Learn to, let, learn to wish them have what you have and more. Learn to celebrate your friends. Learn sometimes when your friends even take the honor of something you have done. It won't hurt you. Be realistic. Come on. Not everybody will be a great friend. Not everybody will be. God has enemies. Jesus called the Pharisees enemies. God has enemies. Paul called Elimah the sorcerer an enemy of righteousness. In James 4, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Very clear. So, you must know who your friends are and relate with them. Let's begin to close gradually. If you don't have friends, you are the problem. You must have friends. Learn to cultivate healthy relationships. Proverbs 17, 17. You learning something? You learning something? Proverbs 17, 17. We'll close here. Relationships with your spouse, with your siblings. Proverbs 17, 17. Can we take it together? Are you there? Let's go. A friend. Oh, I'll wait for you. You there now? Are you there now? Let's go. A friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 18 and 24. You there? Let's take it. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So you must walk at this relationship. You must be there in adversity. You must be friendly. Hallelujah. Say I'm friendly. Say I'm friendly. It means you're hospitable. You know what about putting over? Can you smile? Remove your mask. Smile. That's good to smile. Not the kind of smile. <laughs> oh, come on, smile. Can you smile the whole day? When I'm not mad. Says who? You can smile. Amen. You can be friendly. Be friendly. It's not spirituality to be frowning. Mm. What's the, I'm seeing ghosts. Yes, you are. Learn to be friendly. Is that clear? Learn to culture relationships in the body of Christ, at your workplace, your house. You know, I have business associates that are not believers. I work with people that are not Christians and we can have conversations. Healthy ones. I'm not compromising my faith. And many times I've seen some even acknowledge the lordship of Jesus by what I do or what I don't do. Can have healthy relationships. Be friendly. Is that clear? Be, I didn't say befriend people. You know what I mean by that? Aha, uh-huh. be friendly. Efforts are always needed. Right? You can't raise relationships by Facebook posts, pictures. No. That one is friendship with the world. All right? So, write this down. When you go on the media, you are building followership or viewership. When you go to the person, you are building fellowship or relationship. Things you put in the media is for viewership and followership. It doesn't mean it's for friendship. Is it wrong to acknowledge your friends publicly? Oh, sure. You should. But that's not the strength of your relationship. The strength of your relationships are the I love you's you say privately. 
The strength of your relationships are the pictures that you take together that no one sees. Times you cry together. Times you laugh together. Times you argue. Sometimes when you are close to people, you miss the argument. Ah! Oh yeah, let's argue. You know, sometimes. That's really fellowship in relationships. So church, we can build relationships. Say I can build relationships. Say I can build relationships. I know how to nurture and build healthy, healthy, effective relationships. I'm not a parasite. Come on. I'm not manipulative. I walk and make efforts to build relationships. Come on now. To build relationships. I contribute joy, peace, happiness, hope, faith, love, loyalty in all my relationships. I resist anxiety, fear, suspicion, being judgmental, being harsh in my relationship. I'm born of God. I can get it right in all my relationships. I can get it right in my relationships. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Pray for your relationships right now. Oh God, they are preserved. They are preserved. Come on.